Hello, I'm going to show you how I built this workbench. It's a welding table, an assembly table, woodworking table, um, drinking table, all sorts. I really needed it because my old table was really starting to show its age <laughs> and catching on fire and that sort of stuff. So um, I'm going to have all the measurements and everything down in the video description, so I won't bore you with them during the vid. But it's a um, it's basically a 2.4 meter by 1.2 meter top, 20 mil thick hot roll steel, and the body is all 89 by 89 by 6 tube. So when I was looking for designs, uh, I used YouTube mostly, just looking at other people's, uh, other other creators had posted, and got a lot of good ideas. And some of them are really complicated or an ornate, but I, I couldn't, <laughs> I don't have the skill for that. I'm just an amateur here, just learning. This is definitely the biggest project I've ever made. So moving right along, this uh, lovely chap came and dropped off all my steel for me. And then it was time to start chopping up. I did do a plan. It was written on basically a napkin. It's pretty easy to do a box, right? So just my cutoff saw. And finally got all the frame cut up and ready. Ready to be... Uh, prepared for welding. Here it is all lined up using some little magnetic squares doing the tacks. This is a pretty entry level welder and I'm using flux core arc welding or gasless MIG. Uh, all the doors are open so it's not too dangerous. Bit of paint burning up and had to strap some stuff down. Hold it in shape. Get, got both sides tacked up. Just going to measure them, make sure that they're both the same height. And looks pretty good. Uh, let's see, yeah, yeah. What do you reckon now? Sweet as. Now here's me realizing that I can't just continue tacking. I've got to close myself off, so I've got to fully weld that seam. And here you can see I've had a little wardrobe change. When I'm just tacking things together, I don't mind shorts and t-shirt, but for fully completing the welding, it's um, a hell of a lot more comfortable with the protective gear. So here I go, just doing the tops first, the outside seams. Then just laying them down so I can hit the sides. It's a lot easier for me with um, with my skill in this, in this welder to, to do it facing down instead of across or horizontally. And now both sides are done, just lining them up, just link them together. And now that they're lined up, I can just tack them together. And here I am just getting up, getting getting some gym in for the day. Bit of a table flip. And now the frame is finished, it's fully welded and it's ready for the next step. So I agonized for ages about what to do for mobility for the table and in the end I settled for these uh, casters which can, which also have an adjustable foot which can be lowered up and down in order to level the table um, to the concrete floor. Uh, so you can see me operating it here, it's got a little screw in the middle, you wind it up and raise the, raise the, raise the rubber foot. Yeah. So I had to make some uh, a plate to mount it on, so 10mm plate, cut, into, cut up one for each. And you can see me sh showing how it's going to get mounted. And after a bit of welding, not that pretty, but it's going to do the job. And oh, the moment of truth. Uh, all the casters hold up. Yeah, go on. Hold on, you bastards. Uh, yes. And you can see I'm pretty chuffed with that. And here's the support for the plywood sheet that I'm going to put on the underneath the table to store various things. It's just a, just a 12 mil sheet ply. Uh, 
I'm cutting out the corners to make it fit. It's just going to be friction fit. I'm not going to screw it in or bolt it in or anything like that. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now this probably wasn't necessary. I put some extra uh, 50 by 50 um, members in just to support the top. And here I'm cleaning up, ready for painting. Uh, just some isopropyl alcohol. And spraying some spray paint into the welds. Reckon it was going to protect it. Here I am doing a little check of some colours. And uh, I'll go red, I reckon. Oh, there it is. And it painted the plywood sheet as well. Now here's where things start to get a little bit hairy. That plate's 460 kgs, which makes it about 10% over my max deadlift. So I had to get my mate to come over with his tractor to help me lift it up. And here's the first lift. Ah, there's the second lift. Ah. And about this time I'm starting to worry about what was going to happen if it falls and hits my bloody uh, concrete. But anyway, we got it on there without any further incidents, and the um, only problem we had is trying to get it back into the garage just over the lip of the concrete uh, slab. Needed to get close up, and at about this time I'm realising that I better take my hands off the camera and help out. So now I'm just marking out the corners of the plate. I want to round them over because they're pretty pointy and they really hurt if you walk into one of them. Start with just a cut off wheel, cut off disc. Then I hit it with a flat disc just to smooth it out. Now the plate top had been sitting out in the weather for about a month at this stage and it was a bit rusty and the next thing I had to um and ah over was what to do with the top of it. A lot of people online saying keep it with the mill scale on, it will protect it from rust and from weld spatter and all sorts of things and other people saying no you get better electrical conductivity if you remove all that stuff so and apparently vinegar is the thing you're supposed to use in this case so this is just normal uh, garden variety uh, cooking vinegar, it's only 4% in my country is the minimum requirement for the acid content. So cover it up, I probably put way too much on it, it was dripping all over the place. And Anyway, covered it up with a, a little plastic sh uh, drop sheet just to keep the moisture in so it will uh, don't have to recoat so many times. I did end up recoating it uh, twice in 20, within 24 hours. And here it is the next day. Uh, it was that <laughs> Mate, it didn't look very pretty, I'll tell you what. And nor did it smell good. And this is how it ended up. It probably, yeah, a lot worse than before, but it was wiping off pretty good. And I got this stripping disc. It's not a, it's not stone. It won't gouge. And some fantastic photography here from yours truly. Uh, but it came up pretty good. I was made pretty quick work of it. And after about half an hour of that, looked alright. I didn't hadn't done the edges, that's why they all got some flash rust on them. So that stripping disc didn't gouge, but it did <laughs> leave some marks. Uh, so I wanted to go a bit further than that, so I just used my normal woodworking random orbit sander, just some uh, 60 grit sandpaper, and um, I wasn't going to go any more than this. I wasn't trying to get a mirror finish or anything like that, and you'll never be able to maintain it.
After that, I just sprayed some rust inhibitor lubricant. And it's um, effectively uh, it's a WD-40 equivalent. Yeah, it's looking pretty shiny. Last thing I did was I cut up some little tabs to weld to the underside on each four corner of the table so I could earth my welder and plasma cutter. Here I'm just testing that those like, tabs conduct electricity properly. Yeah, 0.1 ohms, pretty good. Here I am t testing the uh, flatness of the table. I can get a 0.1 millimeter um, feeler gauge across it widthwise and a 0.15 millimeter across it lengthwise. Um, so it's a, bit, a little bit lower in the middle. And here it is, all complete. Yeah, got my, I've got a few of my toys underneath. Of course, uh, it looks like a welding table is never really finished, right? Uh, there's always things you can add to it. Uh, I want to put power outlets and uh, racks to put um, angle grinder and all sorts of other things like that. So this is just the beginning, I guess. And I hope you enjoyed that. Catch ya.